Good afternoon, lovely friends. How are you all today? I hope you're well. Um, yes, it's the afternoon, not morning. I'm very, very tardy today. Uh, lots going on. Before I talk about anything, because otherwise I'll forget, a lady was asking me to show my fox cushion and to show the nose. There you go. It's just a little, um, a little circle of fabric stuffed tied and then sewn on because she wants to have a go at making one of her own and yes i've made a pattern and at some point i would like to make some too but um <clears throat> time there's never any time is there scrabbling in bag so gosh um it's tuesday it's been a week and a day since i was in the garden which <laughs> is very, very, very far from my ideal at this time of year. It's just been, um, it's just been a busy week with other things. And I'll be honest with you, at the moment, um, I've s today, just arriving now, I'm suddenly feeling a bit overwhelmed by the amount of work that needs doing. Um, I've got a couple of really big jobs to get on with and then quite a few little jobs, loads more sewing to do. <sighs> I sort of don't know where to begin today, which is very unlike me. I'm usually, you know, I'm here with my plan, I get stuck in. Um, so I think probably what I'll do first of all is I'm just gonna have a bit of a walk around the garden I mean, I kind of know what needs doing, but just a sort of formulate a plan for today, for starting. And then just think about uh, where I can fit in a bit of extra garden time over the coming couple of weeks or so. Now, uh, one of my big jobs over the next sort of two weeks or so will be to get all the remaining beds open and prepped and ready to receive seed to get all my structures up. Um, I'm actually gonna get a bit weepy now. So, this is gonna seem, I'm sure, look, I think some people will get this, some people will just think this is stupid, but um, it's, today is the morning after, the night before, and the night before uh, is when the beautiful Notre Dame was on fire. Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Do you know, I'm, I'm struggling to um, work out. <laughs> I don't use waterproof mascara. I'm going to look like a panda. I'm struggling to work out or articulate quite why those images... Um, oh, I watched the news for hours last night. Why it's struck me so much. Um... <clears throat> So yeah, the irony is today I'm supposed to be building my vegetable cathedral and here we are with possibly, yeah, the world's most important gothic structure uh, lying in ruins this morning. And it's really, um, oh, I'm struggling to, I'm struggling to put this into words. It, it's just really, really made me feel sad feel so so wretched to see those images I'm sure <clears throat> I'm sure a great great many of you will have visited Notre Dame at some point in the past I'm really really fortunate in that I've been there dozens and dozens of times both well actually dozens and dozens of times inside the cathedral itself but how many how many dozens if not hundreds of times have my eyes alighted from it from the outside as I'm browsing books on the left bank or as I was saying on my Facebook page one of my favorite quiet spots to sit is on a little corner on Ile Saint Louis with my legs dangling over the quay just looking at the seeing it from sort of the back end the east end uh, which is the, if any of you who aren't familiar with the cathedral, the west end with the big, the two big towers, that's sort of the entrance, but the, 
the back end um, is what you see when you're on Ile Saint Louis and that's what any of you who saw the images of it burning last night will have seen. There's something just so familiar and I think it's that familiarity, isn't it? And I know there are far, far worse ha things happening in the world even as we speak and no lives were lost and you know in the grand scheme of things it's just a building but it's so much more than just a building i'm sure any of you who've been there will will remember that sensation of when you first walk when you first walk in your eyes you can't help your eyes are drawn upwards 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 it's so so tall and gazing gazing up there it's 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 easy to believe or it's easy to understand that a thousand years ago when it was being created that that must have felt like the roof was actually in heaven <sighs> amazing and of course because of all the blue glass the quality of light in there is just so magical ethereal so beautiful i was i was trying to read um <clears throat> the news this morning online to see you know how much of the glass has been damaged or how much is savable I think it's too early to tell yet but yeah there we go so it's got a special place in my heart I know it's got a special place in millions of hearts all over the world but I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining Parisians waking up this morning and looking out of their windows and just seeing that shell where the roof and the spire once were. I'm sure it will be rebuilt. I know it will be rebuilt. I know that millions have been pledged by French billionaires already. So I wonder if it will be rebuilt and completed in my lifetime. You know, the original one took 200 years to build. Imagine it though, bare hands and the most simple tools. Oh, just stunning, just stunning. My head is full of images of it at the moment, as in images of it before the fire. So that's what I just have to hold in my head for now. So, yes, <clears throat> I know that's a bit of a digression, but it's just one of those things, these, these things, when they impact on you, uh, I think you just have to acknowledge them. And, like I said, because I need to crack on with building my own little vegetable cathedral as I, as I attach those flying buttresses this year. As if you remember when I was doing it last year, I, I kind of was worried about the bean arches wobbling. So I put flying buttresses up to all of them. Inspired, of course, by the flying buttresses of Notre Dame. Oh, goodness me. Right, well... I think it's going to be a, a quiet and contemplative day. Actually, I think once I get going, that energy is going to come. So I think it's time to get out into the garden, see what needs doing, and just get on with doing it. Do you know what? I feel, I feel so thoroughly distracted today and, and so not here. <clears throat> I think the best thing to do on a day like today, for me anyway, is to start something, to be doing something that's either simple or, you know, doesn't take any thinking. Because the physical act of doing it, being physical with it, should hopefully jog my, um, my brain into being here. Does that make sense? I'm not making sense today, am I? So I've got my lovely geranium cuttings that I've brought down here. Just gonna, oh, slightly tease them out a bit. Got a bit mashed together on the way down. Some of them have thrown up little flower stalks already. Goodness me. So I'm just gonna pop them very simply. It's multi-purpose peat free potting compost I've got all these I've got tons of these 
they're not attractive, these plastic pots that other people have thrown out. <clears throat> so I found them, you know, by our gate waiting to be chucked. They'll do, they'll do for now. It'd be lovely to have, you know, a beautiful collection of Instagram ready terracotta pots. <laughs> but I don't. These will suffice. Oh, have I got one more that. See, look at these. They're trying to. Can you see that? They're trying to put out their flowers already. That one has got almost nothing of a root. It should root in the soil anyway, so it can go in. Oh, I've got one more than I thought I had. Right then. Untangle, untangle. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to put that in the trough because I'm going to do some bits in the trough today too. So we'll set that aside for now. Yay! Right. Let's get planting. Okay, simple as... Oopla. I'm just going to make a little, a little bit of a hole for those roots to go into. Shake it down a bit. I just want to sort of make sure that the roots aren't sitting in a little sort of pocket of air. And then a little tappy tap again. Give them a good firm in. And they'll be happy as Larry. So these can all sit on the deck. So this one. Oh my goodness, how, how meagre is that? I don't even know if you can see it. Just a couple of shows of root. I don't know how well this one will do. I don't have much hopes for it. Not high hopes anyway. But they will root into soil as well as into water. And so it may be... Look at that! Lump of blooming glass in the compost. I'm so fed up with the compost this year. I'm going to shut up about it. And actually, it's not just... I know I bought a load of that cheap compost, but it's been across, I think I've used five different makes of compost this year and they've all been, they've all been full of rubbish, all of them. So um, as I think I mentioned, I will pop these into the cold frame for now because they have been indoors since they were cut. The, these cuttings were done about mid-February. <clears throat> they've been indoors, they've been fairly cool on a north-facing window, but even so, and despite the fact that our temperature is just beginning to climb a bit, I will give them the protection of the cold frame. Oh, I'm wobbling you, aren't I doing that? I'll give them the protection of the cold frame for, oh, probably a couple of weeks or so. Get them in there, give them a nice bit of a watering, and actually, I need to water up everything in the cold frame again because I've been away from the garden for a while. Um, it's probably all looking a bit dry in there. And then we'll have a nice bit of a flowery display come the summer. Well, actually, like I said, some of them want to flower already. But where are we? mid-April I would say that oh probably by the end of May some of these will be flowering and then with regular deadheading they'll flower all through the summer right through till September October or so when I'll bring them in for the winter again I spend so much time sitting outside my shed especially in summer in the evenings after watering that I decided that this little trough that I keep here by the side of the shed, I decided that this year it's going to be all flowers so that it's something lovely to look at. Oops, let's do the other way. Not just to look at, but to smell. Because everything that's going in here should smell really yummy. So I'm just putting a few sticks in as a start for the sweet peas. I think I'll just give them a bit of a, a um, oh, oh, my string's stuck. Oh, there goes my lid. Yeah, I'm just gonna give them a little tie to my uh, balustraded balcony. 
this is going to be, like I say, for the sweet peas. And then I've got some other really lovely stuff to put in here, which I'll bring you around here to show you as I start planting. Birds are happy again today, aren't they? Listen. Oh, well, this is comfy. I may never get up again today. It's just an odd quality to today. It's um, it actually feels a bit humid, a bit muggy. It's definitely got warmer. Um, it looks like our frosty evenings are a thing of the past. Oh, fingers crossed. But yeah, it's um, today definitely feels like go slow. Just just sit in the garden day with a few jobs. So I've got my lovely sweet peas. Now I forgot to mention the other day when I was planting them that in the end it doesn't seem that there's any difference between the ones I pre-soaked for, some of them I soaked for 24 hours, some of them I soaked for 48 hours and the ones that I put in completely dry. Yeah, doesn't seem to have made any difference. They've all grown, well, they've They've both both types have both had germination and both had some fails in germination. So there we go. I think it's one of those things, isn't it? I think maybe soaking them gives them a little bit of a head start. So if I remember to do it next year, I will. But ultimately, if I forget, it shouldn't be an issue. Beautiful roots on that, ready to go. I should just say as well that <clears throat> the, the weather has been a bit peculiar in the last few weeks or the last couple of weeks or so because it's been really, really grey. I mean, it's pretty, the sun's just trying to peek out from behind clouds up there. It's been grey. We've had some real chilly days and chilly nights. But what we haven't had, we haven't had a drop of rain or barely. We've had drizzle, but nothing much. My water butt is almost empty again. And if you remember, I emptied it a couple of weeks ago into buckets and cans in order to let it fill up again after a day of really heavy rain that we had forecast, and it did. Um, but, so the water butt is pretty much empty. But rather, rather more disconcertingly, the ground is bone dry, bone dry. So, you know, I've done quite a lot of seeding, the carrots, parsnips, etc. And obviously planting all the onion sets. The onion sets will just, <laughs> they'll, they'll just sit there for now. They'll be okay, but with the seeds, actually I'm, I'm gonna show you the carrot bed shortly because there is something I need to do on that bed today but oops <laughs> flimsy pots don't whack them so hard do they? okay so that's the sweet peas in pretty much I've got a few sweet peas left and they'll go somewhere in the vegetable cathedral so for now they'll just carry on sitting in the cold frame but <laughs> definitely keeping an eye on watering them. Yeah, we could definitely do with some rainy nights. Not necessarily lashing rain, but just some consistent rain. Okay, so then I had my little straggler of a 
geranium cutting. That's going to go in here too. I think it can go there on the end. Pride of place. Pokey pokey little hole for it. Get those roots in. And now I've got a few flower seeds to sow. Where have I put them? They're down under here. Gloves off, gloves on, gloves off. Just before I've planted these sweet peas, I did give them a really good soak in their tray because they were bone dry. Um, and all that water that's run off into the tray, I'll use in a second to water all this. So, it's a teeny tiny little trough, but I'm going to try and put three extra little bits and pieces in. I completely forgot, as I did end up sowing some the other day, but uh, was it last year, year before, year before last, I grew some gorgeous night scented stock. They were absolutely beautiful. They survived quite happily over the winter and then I let one of them go to seed. But I then forgot to sow the seed last year. So hopefully, this is seed that's a year on. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't come up for me. Fine little seeds. So, just a little light sprinkling of them. This is going to be a right royal mixture in here. I've actually got plenty of the um, night scented stock, so I may do a few either in a pot to go on the deck or possibly somewhere, scratch a little bare patch out of the herb bed for them because again that's a really nice place to sit in the evening and now I've got some lovely seeds sent to me uh, by a lady called Jackie not my friend Jackie this is a different Jackie thank you so much and I really appreciated beautiful beautiful hand-painted card you made that's yeah it's like you put a massive smile on my face when that came through the post so she sent me amongst other things oh I can't get the envelope open Oh, good envelope. I've got some Alison. I haven't grown Alison for years, I think. Not since. I know since I was a kid. I mean, you know, less than a teenager in mum's garden at home. So I just, just the lightest little scattering, smattering of those at the front because they're only diddy and little. And then they don't particularly have a scent, but they're lovely and fluffy and they'll remind me of my childhood. And then finally some uh, Nicotiana. This one is called Sensation Mix, brackets, it's sweetly scented. So again, I think, wow, these envelopes. <laughs> That's some strong glitter. <laughs> Jackie, whatever you put on there. Um, oh yes, there's loads in here. So, I mean, literally just, oh, a sprinkle. And like with the scented, the night scented stock, I think I'll try and get some going for either the end of the herb bed or the, um, or on the deck. Just very likely gonna scratch those in. Oh, do you know what? I should have wet the soil first, shouldn't I? Because they're so fine. Don't. Well, what I'll do, this this tray, oh, so that the sweet peas were in, wobble, wobble, wobble. You can see it's full of water. I'll just pop that in the watering can, put the fine rose on it, and just give this a little bit of a watering in. And look forward to some lovely summer evenings out here, just sitting, lolling chatting to friends, having a beer, whatever it is, but having some beautiful scent from these, fingers crossed, flowers that are going to grow. As mentioning oh, in my last video that I'd free cycled some potatoes, <laughs> they're, a bit, they're a bit small and shriveledy, don't know what variety they are, but you know what? I don't care. It's a um, it's some free spuds. <laughs> so yeah, these were from a 
a lady who lives across the road from me and I went to pick them up and have a look at her garden because she's just starting out. She's very lucky she's got it in her back garden. <laughs> um, she actually started last year she was telling me but they've already increased their veg growing space by two beds this year and I was joking I said you wait in another year's time the whole lawn will be gone and it'll all be veggies <laughs> and she thinks that might be the case too but it was great I was just we, we haven't checked about various veggies and I was just able to give her a little bit of advice in terms of timing for putting things outside like the cucumbers and tomatoes and what have you do you know what I think I'm only going to be able to fit three on this row because I've got that trench there or maybe oh, oh the ground's so dry do you know what I'll stick another one in here now I don't know if they will come too much they are little tiddlers but oh go on get it down there girl get it right down you know what, if they don't come to anything, well, I'll just stick something else in this space. But look what's happened in the last few days with the soil. Oh, we desperately need some rain. I'm now really, really dreading preparing the next lot of beds for this Fudge Cathedral because oh, it's going to be hard, hard work. No two ways about it. I think I'll leave it for tomorrow and carry on with my other jobs for today. <laughs> this is my carrot bed. And the problems in this bed are threefold. One, I don't know if you can make out, but these rows between, so the planks where the carrots are, this row is spring onions, that row is leeks. The foxes have been trotting up and down these rows, trotting up and down, la la la, with the great big feet mashing up my seeds. The other problem is, not only are they content with walking up and down, yes, they've dug a blooming great big hole. So there we've got foxes walking up and down, foxes digging holes, and I don't know if you can tell, but the surface at least, it's absolutely bone dry. So the plan to hopefully rescue this somewhat is first of all i'm going to give it a jolly good soaking i've got just about enough water left in the water but to really get it soaked well and then i'm going to take the hoops away from the broad beans up there bring them down here and get it covered in the mesh. that will a keep the foxes out and b it will just just delay some of that water evaporation Hopefully to give these seeds half a chance. Um, actually, let me just, oops, coming around this watering can, just quickly show you the, um, the broad beans because they're looking absolutely gorgeous and lush. Tons and tons of flowers in here. Let me see if I can show you. Absolutely loads of flowers. Some of the really early flowers towards this end are actually starting to pod up. But, oh, These are, I can't catch up with them to show you them, but there's loads in here, buzzing happily. Oh, there's one. Isn't that lovely? Oh. And that, my friends, is why we take the covers off. <laughs> Happy work, bees. The, um, the February sowings, whoops, there and there, they're still being a bit tardy. I mean, look, look how tiny they are compared with the autumn zone ones they'll come to something eventually right yeah definitely time to get these hoops off get the um get it all dismantled and grr, bring it over to the carrot bed here this is the parsnips i'm not too worried about the ground being dry between here for the calendula. I'm not even worried about the foxes walking on it so much because the calendula are such little tofties, they'll put up with pretty much anything. But then of course, underneath where the planks have been, it has kept that moisture in 
fantastic. No signs yet, of course. I wasn't expecting to see anything yet. With the carrots, um, one of the reasons I didn't net it straight away <clears throat> was the idea was to make it a bit easier to be checking under my planks each each visit. So now to check, it'll be a case of pull off some Envirimesh, get under and check. But never mind, if it keeps a little bit of moisture in and keeps the foxes out, all well and good. Ah, oh, that's better. That should fox the foxes. You know, it's been such a lovely afternoon. All afternoon, it's just bird song, bird song, bird song, bird song. I think it's time for a wee sit down. I've been here though. Um, I think the word I might be looking for is contemplative. Yeah, that's probably the word. It's been so quiet um, apart from just the constant chatter of the birds. So lovely. I've seen a couple of other plot neighbours but they've been really quietly just getting on with their thing as well. I really, within, within minutes of arriving here, at sort of lunchtime early afternoon I realised there was no way I felt up to starting to sort out the beds for the cathedral bed and the arches and everything physically I just didn't feel up to it but also I don't know it, I just didn't feel like I wasn't in the right frame of mind to do like really hard physical yakka I'll pop back tomorrow and do that or at least start it so instead I've just done loads and loads of little outstanding jobs today. Obviously some of them you've seen with the flowers and, and bits and pieces. All sorts of bits of tidying, a bit of grass cutting. <laughs> We're into that time of year where the grass needs doing every two weeks. So yeah, I'm really glad I've been here. It's getting kind of late now. <laughs> the sky is getting darker and darker by the minute but um yeah I'm so glad I was here today so I think it's time for me to say cheerio to you all while I just finish up do my last couple of little jobs have a bit of a tidy up because I've made a lot of mess this afternoon I've had pretty much every shelf and every box open today I hope you've enjoyed a slightly quieter episode. I hope you've enjoyed the birds. I hope you've just enjoyed relaxing and being contemplative with me in the garden today. I will see you all again really soon. Uh, next time with probably, hopefully, <laughs> rather more energy and getting stuck into getting those beds ready. See you all soon. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves. <laughs>